How's it going everyone? Well as you can see in front of me I happen to have a Steyr Scout and this video is going to be based on some of the key features, a brief history, and basically an unbox of all the components and things that you'll receive with your rifle. If you've seen the range day video you'll actually see where we shot this rifle and ran it out to about 100 meters using strictly the all the factory components. We did not actually put the optic uh, on this one. This rifle does come with a set of backup iron sights. So kind of the history lesson with this rifle, if you're not familiar, this is a brainchild in collaboration from Colonel Jeff Cooper, uh, retired Marine Corps, with Steyr Arms in Austria, uh, and then here for the States uh, in a later portion of his life. Colonel Cooper wanted a rifle that he could take anywhere on the globe, backpack it, and hunt and survive with it. This was not originally designed as a survival gun. It was meant as if you could only have one gun and use it anywhere in the world. Uh, some of his key features were length and weight and just the built-in built ease of the rifle. Everything had to be backpacked. There didn't need to be a lot of uh, fizzazz with, with, you know, with the rifle. All of the key features and things that Steyr and Colonel Cooper went over and built into this are really amazing when you put it into the world of what a scout rifle is and what it's meant for. So getting into it, the magazines uh, for this particular rifle, and this rifle does come in 243 Winchester, 260 Remington, 65 Creedmoor, 7mm 08 Remington, and 308 Winchester. Now, that is what this platform is based off of and this action assembly. There is a smaller one, and when I say smaller, I mean more the action assembly. Uh, they have came out with a 5.56 variant, which takes a proprietary, it has its own mag. This particular magazine works with the original five calibers I mentioned, the 243, 260, 6.5 Creedmoor, 7mm 08, and 308. The mags are five rounds. They are polymer. Uh, they are just an, an engineered standard Steyr mag, and they are proprietary. So as far as I know, there are no aftermarket. You have to have a Steyr built Steyr mag. Uh, the rifle comes with two, and I will show you here in this one. Your standard mag will be one inside the action, and then in the back side, uh, one actually goes inside the rear of the stock for securement and locks in and actually finishes off the stock. Uh, can be carried, you know, loaded or unloaded inside. There's plenty of room. And it does have the double feature that, la that locks in. The action in your feeding magazine works like most all style rifles. It has the double feed function which if you're unfamiliar, in the, in the Steyr rifles, these mags have two clicks. And it's for the first engagement when you first click in, you'll see that the mag here doesn't seat all the way in for the action. This is so you can actually open and cycle the bolt and feed rounds over your, over your magazine. So if you needed to change a load or run a luminescent round or if you wanted to change out from a hollow point to a full metal jacket, just do a single round. You can overfeed. The second part of the magazine is when you fully seat it, you get a more positively lock, and this is when you'll actually start stripping rounds from the magazine. Uh, these magazines both are five rounds. There is a kit that makes these into 10 round magazines with an extended base plate and four plate. Action is a simple bolt action. It is a single stage trigger assembly. It does have some adjustment uh, from the inside. You would need a Allen key to set that. The bolt is the standard three position safe bolt system from Steyr. So if you can see here from the back of the rifle, there's an actual little flag that comes up. And when this comes up, this rifle loaded or unloaded uh, with the bolt now locked, the, the trigger is totally inert. 
you it will not go off it's totally taken out of battery at the firing pin and locks the trigger mechanism it also locks your bolt so the bolt handle you cannot charge or uncharge the rifle the second position once you push this flag down and rotate it one forward goes to a safe position still with the rifle trigger being out but at this point you can now open and cycle your action you can feed or strip rounds but the trigger is still unlocked and it still has the firing pin uh, disengaged it's not until you cycle all the way forward there is a red indicator on the back of this dial at this point now is when the trigger and the firing pin are aligned and unlocked and the rifle's hot. So that's the nice safety system with the rifle is you, if you're backpacking, you can carry this loaded. You can actually totally unlock it and lock the bolt handle so you don't have to worry about it snagging on anything for it to come loose. On the top of this rifle, there are a set of aperture sights. It takes a little bit with your fingernail. It's actually more designed to be done with the tip of a round works better. Um, I'll end up using this ballpoint pen just because my nail won't go in. My fingers are too big. This is spring loaded on the back or a spring assist in the back side. This aperture sight is just a circle that lines up with your front blade sight. Now the blade sight in the front is spring loaded. So all you have to do is pull this little groove forward and the sight will pop up. These are not adjustable. They are strictly uh, factory set. I ran this rifle with this sight set up at 57 meters out to 100 meters and had no issue uh, getting on target shooting 10 inch targets. Uh, shot extremely well with this optic setup. Now with that being said, the original purpose of the scout rifle was for hunting primarily on in the African continent was really where uh, Colonel Cooper came up with the idea and wanted a rifle. So as you can see, there are Picatinny rail system here for your optic mounts that are very forward of your action. The reason for that being is for when your optic goes on the front of your rifle. Now with this particular optic, this is my Leopold that I like to test and use for my rifles. This is not technically a scout optic, but you could use it. Normally you would use one with a different eye relief, but for a ex explanation, this is, I'm going to show this. The Picatinny rail goes towards the front, which keeps your eye relief and everything away from your action assembly. So you can still top load your rifle using this, the, the mag single feed feature. Now, if you want to run this rifle as a standard rifle, if you were not going to overfeed and you're not worried about that, there are an additional set of a single Picatinny rail milled into the top of the receiver that has plenty of room for you to put a standard optic. Guys, I'm just setting that there so you can see it. So you can run a standard optic. It depends if you want to use this rifle as the scout or if you just want to use it as a standard bolt action hunting rifle. So... That's that with how the optic works. Uh, you'll have to look at for scout optics due to the eye relief being uh, much different. This gun's really set up for if you wanted to shoot hog on the move, you would definitely want to run it in the scout uh, configuration more with a forward optic than a rear optic. But if you're going to do deer hunting from a blind or from great distance, I would actually set it up and use it for it more as a traditional rifle. Moving forward in the front of the rifle, as you can see, it is a polymer-based furniture all the way through the stock. It's it's actually poured uh, polyglass, the, like most standard Steyr stocks. The rifle is bedded, and there are multiple uh, bolts that pull the action to the stock, so it's bedded in. One of the nice key features with the Scout rifle is here in the front, there's a detent. When you push it in, this acts as a butterfly uh, clamp on the inside, and this rifle actually has built-in bipod. Now, it is polymer. As you can hear, it makes a quite click sound when it happens, and I will show you. This here is the clamp. This is what's moving when you push this button. But the rifle comes with a built-in bipod. 
which is a part of the Ford hand grip up here on the front, which is your furniture. Uh, it does have some swivel to it. I'd say about five degrees left to right. Uh, more just simple for if you were trying to uh, set up on a tree or use it. Um, you do not have to run both sides at the same time. These are independent from each other. The only downfall that most people have, and it's kind of a concern when you first get this rifle, as you can see, I'll rotate this left to right, is due to this being uh, the polymer based into the rifle, uh, people always want to know, how do you release it? You don't. The There's an actual detent here on the front, the way this is designed, you literally just have to pull it. And the first time that you do it, it kind of makes you sick because you think you're breaking the rifle, but you're not. That's how it was designed. Um, maybe not so much that you know you should do this every time you go using the rifle. I would assume after thousands of operations, you know it might come. You might have to tighten this up or have it adjusted, you know, for, uh, from Steyr. But the the general purpose is you just pull back and it will make this uh, click sound, which is kind of unnerving the first time you do it. So this is what it sounds like. It does sound like you're breaking it, but you're actually decamming it here in the front. When you go to lock in the stock in the bipod, you just have to push in a little bit on it to angle it and it latches back inside. So you can actually run this with just one more as a as a hand grip for a left or right, or if you just were trying to base off of something on one side. Um, the biggest thing that I find these very useful for is when you're stowing your rifle. If you're out by a campfire, instead of leaning the barrel up against a tree or worry about it rotating and falling in the dirt, is you can actually pull the bipod down and you can set this rifle up and lay it flat on the ground so you don't have to worry about it uh, falling over. It also works really well for a backpack. Going here to the front of the barrel, uh, there are two different lengths of barrel, one being 19 inches and one being 22 inches. Uh, it depends on what caliber, what configuration you get. Some are fluted, which is it's just the first seven or eight inches here that are fluted. The rest of the rifle is a solid uh, cylindrical barrel. They also come here in the front that are threaded if you wanted to use a muzzle brake or run a suppressor. Those are different options for it. Your internal twist rate will vary due to caliber, but basically your 5.56 is 1 to 7, 1 to 9. This particular rifle in 6.5 Creemore is 1 to 8 right hand. If you bought the 308 variant, I'm aware that it is 1 to 12 right hand twist. So that is the setup there for the inside. Going further, like I said, in the rear of the rifle, give me one second. The rear of the rifle in the butt plate has your extra magazine. The rifles do ship with two mags, one in the back, one in the butt plate, one in the action. One of the other interesting things with this tire rifle, uh, with these, they have a adjustable length of pull, which you just have to peel the rear of this off. This one has not been removed, and I'm not going to, but the, the basic is the rubber butt pad here. You can reach in with a flat blade screwdriver or a good thumbnail, peel this off, it latches, and then the second one here will unlatch. You can actually buy and adjust your length of pull. So that's nice. There are also additional uh, rubber mounts for this if you want a softer one or a harder uh, shoulder pad. Now, if you've noticed on the rifle, you'll see here there are metal C, uh, C hooks. These are for your sling mounts. Now, one unique thing with the sling mounts in this particular rifle and also in your STG69s, and your SSGs are the way that these mount system work. This particular rifle comes with three different or three of these uh, one inch sling mounts. There are different positions along the rifle. There's one at the rear, one at the center, one in the middle of the front. But for ease easeability, I'm going to show you on this one how this works. As you see, there's a slot right here, and on these mounts, they have a little key. 
These are spring loaded. You just insert straight down into the mouth of the receiver and twist. Now these are very difficult. They actually cam over and then you have your sling mounts. With this rifle, there is a sling called a Rhodesian mount and it is a way to actually interlock a chin sling into your forearm for better sta uh, for being more stable if when you're on a on a walk or, or hunting in the field but there is this one like I said here in the front is another one and they're simple cam design you just push straight down and rotate it does not matter if you rotate counterclockwise or clockwise they are spring loaded it'll pop up and then these will move I have yet to have any issue uh, on these rifles of actually getting one of these to fully cam out uh, for the most part. I mean, I'm sure you really could if you twisted up your your sling, but I've yet to have that happen. One of the other nice features are it is left and right sided. So in the middle of your rifle for left or right handed shooters, it doesn't matter. You can adjust and put your sling. Or if you wanted to put uh, your own type of sling system, if you wanted to build one, you can. As you can see, the slings move around. Now these are a little difficult the first couple times you go to use them to get them in and out. Another interesting feature is here in the front where your bipod's uh, button is at, you'll actually see there's this metal insert rail. This is basically a reverse of a 1913 rail, uh, with this being more of the uh, sliding version. If you were to want to run this on a tripod, uh, you would just put the insert mount here on the front and then you would have to cam up tighten with the aperture. So that is what this here is for. Um, there are a few different uh, accessory bipods or tripods you can actually latch here into the front. The coating on this is a standard Steyr Manox. Uh, the whole gun's coated. You would wish to remove the bolt uh, first, pull your magazine, make sure that you did not have a round inside. You will need to go to the red position, which would be your fire, and unlock your bolt and, and pull it back about an inch, and then rotate to the full safe position, which would be when the tab comes up. And then you can fully pull out your bolt carrier group, and you can see it here. There are Really, is nothing inside here except for if you wanted to run a bore brush to clean. That's how you would do that. Now your your bolt is actually cut for foul weather to get dirt and grime out. And as you can see, it is a double two pin design that actually goes inside the breech that does the full lockup. The bolt head for your handle here. Uh, is interchangeable but is extremely difficult to get off due to when they're built they're actually put on and then loctited so I've yet to actually get one twisted off uh, I just haven't gone that far into actually putting one into a vise and having to pry it off but there's your bolt it's all one piece it's all milled um, when I say it's one piece, I mean the, the head for your action and the whole shaft is one piece. It does unlock here to access the firing pin, which I'm not going to do. I've done it in previous videos. This basically inserts. You can cam over. This rear piece of the bolt comes off, and then you can access your firing pin. Uh, it's just unnecessary to do. Uh, maybe once a year or so, you might do this to, to clean it. To reassemble the bolt back into the action, you just need to insert, run forward. Now once you lock this in, you will have to disengage the safety for the action to work or to do anything. So once you roll it forward, and now it's locked. And forward. The overall length on this particular one in the 19 inch configuration is just at 39 inches to 40 inches. It's right in the middle depending on exactly where you want to measure from. The trigger is a single stage and is about four 
4.5 to 4.8 uh, pounds on the pull. And like I said, it is a single stage. Uh, we've already cleared this one, so no one can be con overly concerned. But I'll show you on the trigger. It is very, very nice. There's very little in the take up. We'll actually do it from the bottom side. It's right there. So we'll run this again. This has to be one of the, my favorite triggers in a rifle. Uh, there's th this one is straight from the factory. There's I've had not tuned this one or adjusted it at all. So I'm going to show you that again. Once we've locked it, I don't think there's a millimeter of movement. It literally just moves the length of a hair, and it's there. And actually operating this in reverse from the back side. That's how easy the trigger is. Reset is very nice and positive on the cam. Now this bolt is a little dry, so you can tell it's dragging just a little bit. But once they're looped up, they shoot perfectly. So my finger actually in the top side. Guaranteed you'll know that you have a positive discharge. Uh, I've yet to have any round failure. I shot at 57 meters with this rifle, had no problem shooting a three inch group with the uh, iron sights. Like I said, I never put the optics uh, on this particular rifle. I just wanted to see how well it shot with the irons. Well guys, that's kind of the quick overview of a Steyr Scout. Uh, hope that answers some of your questions, makes you interested. Uh, I'll be playing with one of these a little bit further on uh, for 2020 with another rifle that I'll be doing. But if you're looking and you want to know some more information about uh, scouts and get really detailed information, I would recommend to check out uh, scoutrifle.org or scoutriflemagazine.com. Uh, that gentleman there that runs the website is more familiar with the general purpose and the term of Scout Rifle, and there's a lot more information there uh, than what I could ever really hope to touch on with these rifles uh, because multiple companies have made them. Um, it's not a proprietary name to Steyr. The Scout program has been done with Rugers, with Remingtons, with Savage Rifles. So, I mean, there are a few of them, but the original concept, the original maker who built these rifles uh, was Steyr uh, with Colonel Jeff Cooper. So, if you want a history lesson, you actually want it direct from him. Remember, Colonel Cooper uh, started and ran Gunsight out on the West Coast or Arizona area, so the West for me. But uh, this was his concept, his idea of what a, if you can only have one rifle, would be so there you go if you have any particular questions feel free to put them in the comments let me know what you think